Okay. Hello, everyone, and doing another one of these interviews where I'm talking to people that have made the move to Los Angeles. Uh, if you don't remember me, or if this is your first one that, you, that you've seen, my name is John Deckert. I live in Northwest Florida. I'm a freelance videographer, photographer, and editor, and I do a little bit of acting every now and again. Mm. But that's not my focus. <laughs> and today I'm talking with actor and photographer Chris Labadee. How you doing today, Chris? I'm good. You nailed that name, so that was that was good. Awesome. Because awesome. <laughs> you know that's what I was worried about. Forget about everything else. I know. I Not saw the case. hesitation. You were like, Chris Labity. <laughs> Did I do that? Yes. Yeah, I got it. <clears throat> nailed it. <laughs> you did good. <laughs> Thank you. So, Chris, you made the move to L.A., is that correct? I yes, I did. About a year and a half ago, actually. Um, yeah. Okay. And where were you before that? Uh, I was in Arizona, actually. Uh, I was there for a good, uh, I feel like, seven or eight years. Um Kind of just, you know, rolling with the military family, jumping from place to place, and then landing there, um, and then I guess kind of eventually figuring out that I wanted to be an actor. Mm -hmm. That's that's not uncommon, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go around like that. Uh, oh, I need that's to cool. Go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, year and a half, how would you describe your first six months? Woo! First six months, uh, I would say it was pretty rough, um, but like in a good way, you know, like how you move somewhere, you're on your own, you're kind of doing your thing, you're pursuing your dreams, and um, it's just kind of like a reality shock almost, where you know what to expect, everything that happens is what you expected, and yet it's just your mentality and your body and everything just adjusting to all of it. Um, so yeah, so uh, I didn't book my first big movie my first month. Uh, <laughs> you know, you learn, you, you figure that out, and uh, you just kind of get used to the workflow of L.A., and it's just, um, God, L.A. is just work every day for your career, otherwise it's not going to happen. And I think after the first six months, that's when I kind of realized, like, all right, I mean, I, I, I can see friends, and I can, you know, hang out and do this and that, but, like, I really need to start making every day count towards my career because I didn't move to L.A. to do anything else. So, yeah, I think the first six months after that, it was just, like, game time, like, let's do this, and I started working every day towards acting. You so mentioned... That kind, of, that kind of answered your question. Yeah. That kind of answered. I have, I have something to follow up on. You cool. mentioned expectations. I think everybody has certain expectations or things that they expect. Yeah. What were they for you? Um, you know, I, I didn't really think I was going to book, like, this huge movie or recurring role on a show or, or anything like that, and, like, within my first month. But um, I was kind of hoping for those auditions. Um, and I had signed with an agency a week after getting here, and, um, you know, you start to learn, like, okay, the, the totem poles of the agencies and the, the totem poles of the management uh, companies and stuff, and, uh, you know, you got to really, like, those higher-up people, they don't care who you are. <laughs> They're not interested in seeing who you are. Um, You've got to you've got to kind of put your time in with the the smaller agencies and the smaller managers who believe in you, um, and then work your way up from there. And all those big break stories you hear about, um, those are people that usually had some kind of connection, or are like the 0.01 percent lucky <laughs> actors who just got seen by the right person. Um, so yeah, I mean that that was that. You know, I had to settle for like a lot of um, auditions that, you know, are just work. It's work. And you have to respect it the same way that you would respect um, an audition for a show that you watch or a movie that you would have killed to have been in. So um, there's an appreciation for just having auditions uh, shortly after you move here, I think. 
I feel like I'm never really answering your qu- your questions. I feel like I keep going off my own little world. That's what it's all about. Okay. It's there. It's not a test. It's you're right. <laughs> C plus. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, it's your experiences. Um, and as far as you know, you say overnight success. I think people get caught up on wanting to be that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But everyone that I've talked to and all that I've read, it seems like the people that are the quote-unquote overnight success have been doing it for 10 years already. Yeah. You just didn't know about it. It Right, right. It was like a secret workflow. (laughs) They were putting in time. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And that's that's exactly what L.A. is. It's, um, It's hard work. And, and time and passion, um, and the casting directors, they, they want to get to know you before they cast you, and they need to see that you are serious and that you are here for the long haul. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's establishing relationships with people. That seems to be the trend that I've been hearing, that it can... I don't know if this has been your experience, but it seems like it's either... It's either the friendships, the relationships, or it almost, in some cases, kind of like second family. Is that too much of a stretch? No, it's really not. Um, because uh, casting directors, they, they want to cast people that they trust and that they respect and that they like. Um, and they're not just going to trust, respect, and like some total stranger. Right. Um, but if it's Chris Labity, who's been here for... Eight years, <laughs> and he doesn't give up. You know, not not to you know put eight years on there. Like I mean, it could be a lot shorter than that. But I mean, to my right, I have like a list of casting directors that um, I want to meet or have met. And um, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I think it's I think it's just being aware of who you need to know, and then establishing a genuine you know connection with that person, because obviously they just want you to succeed too. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, what was your path that you took to get to where you could talk to those casting directors that you have so far? Um, it, man. Um, well, I was lucky enough when I first got out here um, to get referred to this pretty great um, management team. And uh, it was tough, though, because I had to prove myself to them because they had about 12 people on their roster, and they were all working actors, like, on TV or in films. And um, taking me on um, would mean that they would have a no-name on their roster. So they would have mm-hmm. to train me to, to get to that point where I was ready to not be a no-name. Um, and so when I first auditioned for them, they really liked me. They liked my look. But... Um, they're just like, but you're not, you're not ready. I don't feel comfortable putting you in a studio uh, for, with a million-dollar budget and saying, like, this kid can deliver. So <laughs> and I totally got that, you know. I was like, yeah, I just moved to L.A. Like, I, I didn't, I don't know if I fully expected that. But um, so they put me up in a class, uh, a Meisner class in Santa Monica, and um, I was doing that for a bit. Um but yeah, I mean, so like I had to kind of put in my time and my, my training and all that stuff to show them like, I'm serious, like I can deliver for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then, you know, uh, things didn't really work out with them because they also were trying to transition into being producers. And uh, yeah, and so I just kind of noticed that they weren't giving me as much time as I, I think needed as a new in-development client. Mm-hmm. So we decided to part ways, and it was in the best, you know, way possible, like, I think they're fantastic. Um, so I moved on to a new manager and then another new manager. Um, and I think I have a good... I, I think I'm in a good place now. Uh, I think that the manager that I have now is... He's established and, you know, connected. And I actually even um, explored agencies outside of L.A. Um, since a oh, lot of work... Really? Yeah, since a lot of work is kind of transitioning out to, like... New Orleans and Atlanta and, and, and Texas even. Um, so I looked into that and now I'm represented uh, in those states as well um, with like serious like referral and uh, you know I guess demo reel proving myself worthy with all that stuff and 
Uh, I don't know what these gestures are, but um, I'm going to lock it down. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, just, it's about exploring all your options and just striving constantly to just work. And, and I think that's why I'm always so busy is because, I, you know, I started writing a script with uh, Miriam Sine, actually, who you know. And then um, mm -hmm. we're trying to get that going, and uh, we've got a couple working actors involved with that project, and um, it's it's really just making your own stuff and then and going for it and working towards everything else in your life with your agencies, your agents and your managers, and but making sure that you have a constant workflow going on for yourself in any capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you mentioned that you know you had the management team notice that that wasn't really working. Had another manager and then had another one now. That yeah, the, you think is working out. Yeah. How did the transition work that you were able to then move on from one to the next to the next? As far as like, is there what resources do you know of, or is it just oh, this person seems pretty good. Why don't you go talk to them? It, it just kind of worked out for me for some reason. Like uh, the first one, we you know I said was referral. Mm -hmm. um, but when I left, um, I, I actually did a workshop for um, the casting director of Vampire Diaries and a bunch of other stuff, which I've been told a number of times I look like a vampire. So I'm like, well, then I should probably explore <laughs> that show. Sure, why um, not? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, did, I did that workshop, and then um, a manager from Luba Rockland was there, uh, showed interest, reached out to me after the workshop, um, and I was with them for a very, very brief time. Um, but it's hard because a lot of their people as well, Luba Rockland, they represented like Paul Walker and, uh, and they, they represented big people. And um, it's hard to say that I was really even represented by them because it was such a short time. I didn't really, I only had like two auditions with them. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it just didn't work out because... Uh, uh, they're all about name actors, and I think, mm -hmm. and they do, and I think with the, a higher management team like that, they do a lot of um, testing with like new talent, and uh, and they say like, I wonder if you're a good fit, and we'll like take you on for a little bit and see what's up. And um, at that time, like they had somebody, <laughs> this guy looks just like me, uh, believe it or not, and uh, they had just signed him, and I think so, maybe two weeks after signing him. They were testing me out, and they just kept saying, like, uh, you really remind us of the guy that we just signed. Um, uh, so, you know, it parted, we parted ways, but also in a positive way where they said, well, reach, out, reach back out to us, you know, later um, if you, you know, you know find yourself working and, and you don't have a manager. Um, so, you know, that, that was a, a positive connection to make. And then uh, the third, my third and final manager as of right now, uh, I actually got from a reel that I, I also edit, so I, I shoot and edit um, acting reels, and one of the reels that I edited together, the um, the manager had seen it when that actor went into an uh, interview, and he like loved the reel, and he was like, there's a certain style here that's simple, but um, you know, it's like, it's workable, it's what I want, and so he reached out to me, and I guess, I don't know what he's expecting, I, I don't know if he was expecting some, like, <laughs> Old guy was like, I put that together. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he saw me and he's like, oh, wow, you're young. Do you act? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then so we've been talking for a while from there, and uh, and then eventually I decided to sign with him. <sighs> yeah, so, I mean, it's just kind of about the right people kind of coming into your life or being, you know, seeing your work or being referred or whatever. I, I don't, I guess I just never looked up a management team and, set up an interview the, the old traditional way. It was just kind of referrals and luck. Yeah, well, I was hoping by asking that that there was like, oh, well, I just went here and I did this, but it's not quite so simple that way, is it? Oh, you mean like, I was at the mall eating ice cream and then a manager walked by and said, do you act? <laughs> well, either no. that or maybe there was a <laughs> website that was like, oh, this this manager oh. has five stars. I'm going to contact them. Well, see, there's definitely that. There's um IMDb Pro, and uh, like I I IMDb Pro is like my Facebook. Um, it's the the fastest. I'm not sure if you're familiar. I know you probably know IMDb. 
Sure. The yeah. Internet Movie Database. Yes, nailed it. Um, and then Pro allows you to see, like, the casting directors, the, uh, the, the agents, and, like, their names and emails and phone numbers and, um, and all that stuff, so you can really do research on, like, hey, this show just came out. I feel like I could be a good fit for it. I need to know the names of the casting directors. Who cast it? Oh, this guy's in it? Oh, he's represented by so-and-so? Oh, they're kind of like a, like a third branch, you know, agency. Mm-hmm. I could actually realistically be represented by them. I'm going to reach out to them. Here's their information. So that's IMD Pro is like, oh, I, know, I love it so much. <laughs> it's everything. Nice, because from my perspective, I always wondered, why do they have a version of that that you can pay for? And <laughs> so I never knew really what you got for that. So yeah. that, that, that does seem like a good resource for just getting info, you know, for, to be able to yeah. contact people. Nice. Any industry people, um, God, you could really benefit from it. So, it's my faves. <laughs> well, if we could go back a little bit, yeah, not just in the conversation, but your life. Oh, <laughs> are you ready to go back? Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> I travel right here. Yeah, yeah, but we'll <laughs> still be, we'll still look the same. It'll be like Back to the Future. Oh, good, good, because I like me right now. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But for, like, a long time ago, I had, like, a rat tail, and I don't know what Ooh. I'm thinking. Oof. So let's not go too far back. <laughs> well, it'll, de- it'll be up to you, because oh, okay. I'm asking the question. Uh, what <laughs> first interested you in acting? Um, man, uh, that's so hard to say, because it just kind of came over me uh, one day, I guess. But um, I think when I first moved to Arizona, uh, you know, I was going through, like, that natural phase of must find friends. (laughs) Um, And so when I got to, good Lord, was it middle school, eighth grade? Yeah, uh, I was, like, a week late. And so everybody had already, like, Everybody either already knew each other or the new kids had already found their, like, groups. So mm-hmm. when I came in, I was like, shit, <laughs> what am I going to do? And um, for whatever reason, like, uh, going through the entrance door, the first people I saw was, like, this group of kids playing hacky sack. And not that I had any hacky sack experience, but uh, for whatever reason, I was like, them. I just wanted to make it easy. I was like, yeah, I just don't really feel like looking for people. Like, I, I just want to click <laughs> immediately. So I picked them. I went over to them, and I just kind of let them accept me into the group. And a, v- a few days later, I was like, so what do you guys actually do, do? And, um, yeah, they were all actors. <laughs> and so I kind of just, I was like, oh, that, that could be cool. Like, So I kind of fell into it. Like, fell into that naturally, I guess, that way. And then, um, you know, did the whole, you know, theater and uh, skits and all that stuff with the class. And I just kind of fell into it naturally because of my friends. But um, while it was fun, I don't think I took it very seriously until college when I was like, well, how do I transition from high school to college? And, like, what am I interested in? I was like, well, I've been doing, you know, acting and stuff. And that's been pretty fun. So let's just see where that goes. And, um, you know, doing for me doing theater is wildly different from doing like film. So like that's the first class I definitely signed up for was an on camera acting class, and that's when I fell in love with the process and the and the idea and method of acting um, because I became like obsessed with the subtleties of of film acting. And uh, so yeah, yeah, my professor Charles St. Clair is is probably the biggest reason why I'm actually out here pursuing it because, um, you know, he believed in me. Uh, and I definitely didn't believe in myself when I first started out. So he's he's the one that made me realize, like, this could be a reality for me if I really, really work hard for it. And uh, he kept pushing me, and here I am now. And, uh, yeah, super grateful to for the my journey, I guess, in acting and finding Charles and, and all the people that I've had the pleasure of working with because everyone inspires you every day. Everyone you work with, they've they've I've taken a part of them in me and use that to, to grow as an artist and as a person. So that's the important thing to do. Seek that out or not necessarily seek that out, but take it in 
when it's offered. Right. right? Exactly. Because sometimes the easy thing to go, it's like, ah, oh, no, no, you're just being nice. You know, you, I'm right. sure you say that to all kinds. Um, did you ever, have you ever felt that way? Or has it always just been like, oh, yeah, yeah, I guess you do. You know. I am that good. No, uh, I definitely... <laughs> I was definitely, you know, hesitant when, uh, you know, people said, yeah, you could be an actor. You, yeah, you should pursue that. Um, but I, it was different when my professor said it because it wasn't, like, in class in front of everybody, like, yeah, yeah, you could do it. Like, I was really, really struggling um, with what I wanted to do. And uh, and I, I just, uh, it was a lot of just, like, not just a lot of uncertainty and um, insecurities. Uh, oh man, insecurities! Like mm -hmm. uh, put yourself on camera in front of the class, and like you become like the most insecure person. And that's how every actor feels when they first see themselves on camera and and see the the work that they're trying to put in. And um, but some you, of the big names today, they refuse to watch their own movies. So. Yeah. So you you figure out your process as you go, um, but. You know, Charles was like a, a mentor slash father to me. Like he, he, I had a lot of talks. We would like go and grab like Chino Bandino's, which is like this like half Mexican, half Chinese restaurant. And uh, we'd just go and talk and like, and he would just lay it down for me, like real talk and just say like, look, you, you have potential. You just need to realize that and you need to accept it and then just go for it. And, um, after hearing that so many times, it's just like he's not just saying that. Like, I, I, and then that's when I really started to believe in myself and um, and really pursue it. And then the more work I got, the better, um, or the more I appreciated those words and, and believed them. So, aside from taking classes and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. what step? What was your process to? gain the confidence and to just decide to finally then make the decision to move? Um, you know, I, I did a lot of training in college, uh, doing a lot of different um, classes for acting um, and stage combat and this and that, and that was all, uh, you know, extremely beneficial. But um, there's a, in Arizona, there's a really um, cool film community out there um, that, like, they really give opportunity um, to a lot of, like, new actors to just work. And, uh, and it's, it's really easy to access, uh, gain access to that community and, and find the right people to connect and, and network with. And I was really lucky because, um, I, you know, I did skits and stuff with my friends. Uh, uh, yeah, we did, like, a uh, comedy web series and a bunch of skits and, like, small, like, little comedic shorts. But, um... And that was just kind of like kill time, but also build a portfolio of, of work. And mm -hmm. uh, I think the first thing that I, the first real short film that I did uh, was a film called Kisses with Melissa Farley, who I think you know. But um, she actually got me on that set. Uh, I guess one of the actors had um, dropped out of the project like 30 minutes before they were supposed to shoot. And she referred me to the director, Christopher Sheffield. And she was mm -hmm. like, can you be here in like 30 minutes? And I was like, yeah, 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 I can do it. So I drove all the way down to like Gilbert or whatever it was. And um, yeah, uh, I learned the lines really quick, made it happen, and uh, played a vampire. And uh, <laughs> as we discussed earlier, that is my typecast. And um, yeah, uh, and that's, that's when I really got to like experience working with other people in a more serious setting, and uh, um, I was, I'm actually really happy with my work in that film, especially for it being my first one, but the director, um, I guess, was also impressed, and from there, he offered me the lead role in his feature, Run For Your Life, and, uh, and that was huge for me, because um, I never thought I would be able to just be offered a role on a feature like that. Um, and so we went up to Yuma, did that, and from there I, I just gained like a world of confidence. Um, not cocky, <laughs> ego kind of stuff, but right. I just that, felt good about myself, you know? Um, sorry, you were going to say? Oh, just 
important to have that distinction versus, yeah, I can do this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> versus, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I can do this. That's the one. That's, that's <laughs> Yeah, that was that's how I felt, and um, and when that trailer came out, I just remember like um, a lot of people would message me on uh, from the community and, and be like, hey, the trailer looks great, I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Welcome to the community, and um, everyone was awesome. Everyone was just so inviting and so um, friendly, and um, and I just I I felt good, and and I was I started working a lot after that. Um, yeah, auditioning for shorts and and other features, and and sometimes not even auditioning. I had I was lucky enough to just be offered stuff here and there. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I have every, I I thank the that community so much because I moved out here with a complete you know full demo reel, and uh, a ton of experience. And uh, God, I needed that because if I came to LA with none of that, like uh, my my. Uh, growth in my career would have taken this much longer, you know? Mm-hmm. So that shows the importance in, you know, doing stuff in the community, not necessarily, you know, big, big stuff, but just... Just any there. opportunity. Yeah, if, if someone believes in you or somebody wants to to work with you, you just, just jump in, experience it. You never know what could happen. That's true. Um, <laughs> what has you said that you know through all of this, it has been about building confidence and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. not knowing what you necessarily wanted to do, but people saying, "Well, you you could be an actor." Um, has that has there been any other thing? that had been a possibility or yeah. no yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it, I mean acting in college I was like yeah acting that's what I want to do I finally figured it out because I I realized how much I cared about acting and, and respected um, the the process and and the people that uh, were working actors, and uh, mm -hmm. I kept telling myself, like, I mean, I know this is a really hard career to jump into, but as of right now, I know this is the only thing I want to do, and it's the only thing that makes me happy, truly happy, and uh, years and years, you know, passed, and I just found that it stuck, mm -hmm. that love uh, and that passion for acting. It not only stuck, but it just continued to grow stronger and stronger, and and yeah, I mean, I'm 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 here in LA for the long run. Like, this is everything to me. Acting is the only thing I truly, truly care about that makes me happy. With, you know, other things that fall in line behind it, like photography and writing and the potential to possibly direct one day. But um, yeah, I I don't care about anything the way I care about acting. You don't want to be doctor. No. <laughs> yeah. No, I I don't trust myself <laughs> to um, handle being in a bloody situation like that or take people's lives in my hands. No, I that's too much responsibility. I got mad respect for the people that do that. That's just not for me. <laughs> so it was acting and you know some of the other things that you mentioned, photography, writing, all of that. That just mm -hmm. that's what worked for you? Yeah, the other things kind of fell into place um, shortly after you know I discovered acting. Um, photography kind of came about when I was a casting associate at a agency in Arizona, and um, I just thought you know seeing all the work that was coming in from our photographers, I was like I could do that, and mm -hmm. uh, and then I started doing it, and uh, I just kind of taught myself. I never really went to like classes or learn the proper way. I just kind of picked up a camera and started doing it. And then I, at first it was kind of like work, but then I started to really appreciate um, just the artistry behind photography. And, and while, you know, today photography is what helps pay my bills, like, I love it. Um, and then writing is something new for me that I just kind of started to pick up. 
And it was part of that whole, like, find your own work, make your own work happen. And, and you know, and Miriam and I had talked about that, and that's kind of how we started writing our first script together. Um, so, yeah, I think things just kind of fall into place, and your love, your passion can grow and expand. But, I mean, it all goes back to that, to the core of it, which is acting for me. Mm-hmm. Because I'm in that script. I wrote myself in that script, if I didn't mention that earlier. That's, that was the whole... <laughs> you did not mention that, but... <laughs> yes. All right, I got gotcha. you. See, the core came back. Cre- create your own roles. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and with this question, there may not have been a turning point yet, but if there has, when would you say that turning point has been when you realize that you know, I'm going to be here for the long haul? Or did you just decide that before you even moved? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I I think I had said that before I moved, um, but it's different saying it and then really experiencing L.A. and then and then really making that decision like, do you want to do this for the rest of your life? Possibly. Um you know, and it's 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 really tough out here because um, mm-hmm. everyone everyone out here is here for the same reason. But uh, and that was really disheartening. But um, the more I got to meet other actors um, and just mo- mostly observe in like auditions and just see how other people function, um, I think I was soon able to kind of separate myself from those other actors because um, a lot of people are here, um, they're born into it, and they kind of just fall into acting, and it's just kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And I see those people as doing it, like, if they don't get their big break, they're here for a few years before they kind of move on to something else. Um, Other people are just lucky, and that's just, you just deal with those people. They're just lucky and good for them. I'm happy for them. Um, And then there's... Uh, there's a lot of other kinds of actors out here, and then there's, to me, a smaller percentage who are serious and dedicated, and, like, they live and breathe acting, and, you know, I, you know when you tell your family, like, yeah, I want to be an actor. Oh, everybody wants to be an actor. Like, there's millions of people that want to be. Yeah, that's so true, but mm-hmm. then you got to remove all the, the bulk, and, and, and in, the, in that group, you'll find a really, really small group of people that are just killing it and working, and, and they work every day towards that. And um, I can say that a lot of people don't, I think, work every day towards what they want. Um, and that's totally fine. Not everybody has to, you know, that's that's how they live their life. But um, I think I fall into that part of that, that group of people that are fighting every day. And I believe that those people that fight every day will find some success in some form um, sooner or later. You just got to trust yourself and, and believe that you're here for a reason, and, and that's what I'm doing. So, um, yeah, I'm okay with whatever happens. Um, obviously, I'd love to be a working actor, but um, I understand that that might not, that might not happen. Um, and so that's why I've, I'm kind of creating other things for myself to creating other opportunities for myself. So just like any financial portfolio, diversify. (laughs) Diversify. Yeah, exactly. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Well, you touched on, you know, what if, you know, there's a time when you don't make it, you know, God forbid. Uh are there any other continuing thoughts or fears that you have? You know, I know that we're we might be getting into a little emotional stuff. You know, I, I would say that I have tissues here, but they, they might not get to you in time. Um, <laughs> are there any continuing thoughts or fears that you have? You know, regarding confidence or, you know. Be, just being able to maintain the motivation to to do it every day. Um, yeah, I mean, every day is something new, and um, 
the rejection is is such an interesting thing to have to deal with um, on a pretty frequent basis. But I think over time you kind of numb yourself to it, and you learn that you just have to take everything day by day, and um, and and really what it comes down to is you just don't care. You just stop caring. You really care. You do care. But you just got to allow yourself to not care and to just put in the work, um, give it your best, and as soon as the audition or whatever is done, move on and look forward to the next thing. And if you hear back, oh, great, cool. If you don't, it's okay because I already forgot about it. Um, I think that's the, that's the best mentality to have to survive LA because I mean sometimes you'll have nine auditions a week and then sometimes you'll have one uh, or none and uh, like me <laughs> this week I had none so but um, two weeks ago I had like eight and they're pretty pretty good auditions pretty big ones so you know it's just uh, I think it's just understanding a certain mentality and then utilize like going about it and just doing that, living that that mentality. Um, and I kind of got lost in my own words. I, what was, You had kind of a two-question thing. Um, yeah. What was the other Well, question? just how are you able to maintain the motivation to do it every day? <clears throat> yeah, and so I, uh, I think finding <laughs> hobbies or other things that you love maybe not as much or whatever, but um, that's that kind of falls into me like the, the diversifying, so the writing and uh, the directing and the doing the photography and my editing and um, you can't you have to put all of your focus into what you want to do for me being an actor, but you also have to have time to breathe <laughs> and to just live your life because I guess that's that's one fear I think a lot of people have is like I don't want to waste my life. Um, right. And nobody wants to waste their life. Um, and I definitely had that fear and mentality early on, but like I said, when you when you start to understand that it's not just going to be an overnight success, and you have to put in the time and, the, and you have to have patience, um, that's when I think you start to realize. Well, I should really start to kind of branch out and and really take every opportunity to diversify myself and, and my work. Um, and so, yeah, I think, you know, writing writing this script uh, with Miriam has been a, a huge, huge thing for me. And um, it, I can still go to my auditions and I can still do this and that. But then uh, at the end of the day, I can go to the script and work on this and, and still be productive, but allow myself to, to kind of breathe and let go of everything uh, you know, heavily acting related, you know, all the career stuff. Um, so having just having a good support system. Um, mm -hmm. I was lucky because you know, like I said before, Arizona has a it's a pretty cool film community, and a good chunk of that community has moved on to LA. And uh, so I mean, I, I I moved here with like a grip of, of friends already that were here and mm -hmm. more friends that kept trickling in and so I've always got somebody to talk to or to you know spend time with and hang out catch up just relax with so mm -hmm. I think support systems are extremely extremely beneficial and I, I can't tell you how many actors I've met out here who you know, I just moved here from Ohio or Michigan or whatever and moved here with nothing and they have no one and it's it's hard. It's really hard to be out here by yourself. So, yeah, <laughs> I got lucky with that. Um, yeah, I think all those things, just like, just not, not living and breathing acting, mm -hmm. living and breathing it, but like finding other things to care about and and fight for, and that and that way you you know you're you're you you're t living your life and. I, I don't have any regrets so far, so I've been pretty happy, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, you mentioned that you know some weeks you might have eight auditions, some you might have one. Yeah. 
Uh, and reality of it is from those eight, you might get one job or you might yeah. get any. Uh, how do you... Is there any way to deal with that other than just doing it and, you know, from the outside perspective, get the impression that L.A. is a really expensive place? <laughs> oh, man. Um... Because yeah, that, oh, that, that ultimately is my fear. <laughs> is the, the financial struggle? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it is so expensive out here. Um, yeah, you know, okay. So when I first got out here, uh, it took me, uh, I think, uh, two months to find a job. And granted, I could have probably found any job, but I was just super focused because I had an agent as soon as I moved out here. Pretty much, um, I. I really wanted to find a job that wasn't um, being a waiter, just because I would be terrible at that. Um, so I needed that flexibility, uh, mm -hmm. and that's why it took me so long to find a job at first, because there's not a lot of uh, jobs like that. And a lot of people, you have to be like, oh, I'm, I'm not an actor. No, don't worry. I won't flake out on you or try to get somebody to cover my shift. Don't worry. <laughs> right. Because um, they're used to that. I mean, we're, it's L.A., like... <laughs> Um, so I finally I got a job at Blockbuster, um, free movie rentals, and um, all right, yeah, and they were super flexible with my schedule, and, and they were super cool with me, you know, doing because everybody there was film related, and um, just doing that, and like bare, my paychecks barely covered rent, um, so I really had to like be very careful about like going out and eating and <laughs> and this and that, and. Um, yeah, uh, that was really rough because, like, literally my money went straight to, like, rent and bills, and I was eating, like, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, like, three times a day. <laughs> um, it's a lot of care packages from home and friends who were worried about my health <laughs> would come in on a frequent basis. And, um, yeah, um, it's, it's really expensive, but... Um, I, I was lucky enough, the place that I'm in now is pretty affordable and it gives me the space that I need, but, um, you know, Blockbuster shut down, what, in December? Yeah, so the Jan since January of this year, I've just been freelancing, uh, doing headshots and uh, shooting scenes for reels and editing reels and, and, and then small things here and there, small other gigs, but, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's part of all that, like, just... It's a grind, you know, and everybody out here, if you don't do the job, somebody else will because plenty of other people are more than capable. So if you're given an opportunity, prove yourself and work. Um, and so that's that's what I do every day. I'm, I, I, I work towards my career, but I also work. Um, so, I mean, I've been pretty pretty lucky and fortunate so far, um, having paid my, my bills and and my rent, and, and, and actually living comfortably, like going, eating out and, and going to the movies and stuff as of January, when I, I guess, pretty much allowed myself to just trust that I can work, and I can fend for myself, and so yeah, freelancing has been awesome for me so far, knock on wood. Wherever there might be some. <laughs> oh, you found <laughs> some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to the corner over there. There you go. <laughs> Um, well, that's good to hear because, you know, get the impression because, you know, not there and just have horror stories or whatever to pull from and it's, the irrational thing is, what if I end up on the straight, <laughs> you know? You know, and, and that happens, and you see it happen, but um, it's it's all part of that, that mindset and that work. Like, you're more than capable of keeping things going as hard as it can be. Um, mm -hmm. But there's, there's always an alternate, you know, there's always an option. 
uh, you always have something there that you can channel or figure out. Um, yeah, so I, I think certain mindsets will ex excel here in L.A., but, I mean, if you expect things to just kind of happen for you, to be handed to you, I, I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't Best know where it's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, good or bad, what has been your most memorable experience so far? Ooh, um, how about a little bit of both? Uh, <laughs> Why not? Um, Little yeah. peanut butter and jelly. It kind of it kind of meshes into it's it's yeah it's they kind of mesh together. But um, there was this one film. Oh, I hope I can speak freely about this. But um, there was one film where I knew the I I I knew the director. He um, it was going to be his first feature, and he was working towards getting a lot of like name actors involved in the cast. And early on. I was, uh, he, he was really impressed with my demo reel, and he offered me uh, a small role in the film, a small role equaling out to four scenes, each scene um, dealing directly with one of the leads. So mm -hmm. a huge opportunity for me to work with to side by side. Yeah, with working actors, and um, it was great. Um, you know, so that, that was a really huge thing for me, and I was stoked about that. Um, but then as the feature started to come together um, and producers and casting directors started getting involved, like legit ones, um, it was soon realized that, um, you know, the offer that was made to me, you know, was an offer, a genuine offer by the director, but um, as a realistic one, not quite. Um, because the producer and the casting director were like, well, this guy doesn't have any professional credits. Um, I, he's not from any TV show, or he hasn't done a, a, few, a handful of movies, and um, and so I kind of had to like I had to re-audition for the role, which mm. is fine. Mm. Um, but um, you know, I, I think that it just unfortunately wasn't meant to be because they decided to go with somebody that had both TV credits and um, professional film. Uh, credits, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, actually, let me finish that. Like, um, that was definitely a low. Like, finding out that I was getting replaced um, uh, because you know, I guess I just got comfortable with the idea of like of that role being mine, um, and you know, that's something I learned is like you're never, it's never really yours, or the job is never really just, it's never fully yours until you're at the premiere or you're watching it on the big screen because you could get fired anytime or you could get cut <laughs> from the film. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's all with that mentality of just not caring. Like, you just, you, you realize that you were blessed with an opportunity. You do the work. You're, you're excited and all that stuff. But end of the day, like, you have to, like, let it go and move on because who knows what's going to happen. Um, and so, like, you know, I, I definitely took that hard. Um, I went back home to Arizona for a little bit to just kind of, like, take a break, recover. Um, not that I, you know, need that all the time, but that was definitely, like, a big one for me. Um, and so I definitely needed it at that time. Um, came back, and then the director was just like, hey, like, yeah, I feel terrible, um, but I'm going to get you in, and he got me a small, a very, very small role. Um, it was like an under five uh, character um, or role. What but, is that? Um, mean? It means under five lines. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so I mean super small, but um, yeah, I obviously accepted. I uh, did the film, had a blast. Uh, I met, met a lot of the crew and uh, some of the actors that were involved with that day's shooting. And, um, you know, I, I look at it as... Um, a blessing because not only did this director fight for me um, from the beginning to have me in that original role, but found a way to sneak me in um, mm -hmm. because he believes in me and he wants to give me that opportunity. And who knows where what's going to happen with him? But to be to have somebody on your side rooting for you 
huge. <laughs> so uh, you know that's that's the the big positive I take away from this because I don't know maybe five years from now he's going to be directing uh, I don't know the next whatever huge blockbuster and maybe at that point I'll have enough credits to prove myself. But um, yeah, uh, you know you just you just take things as it is and. Um, you know that was that was a that was a big deal for me. Uh, I, I learned a lot from that experience, and though it was, you know, upsetting and, and hard for me, um, I feel like it took away a lot of positive from it. Um, and I think that's what you need to do in order to to survive in LA. Is like a lot of bad stuff's gonna happen, but you need to find ways to to turn it around and turn it into a positive, and and learn from it, and grow from it, and then utilize that growth into your next experience or situation. So yeah. And so having that experience, that is a good example of where the support system comes in. Exactly. <laughs> oh yeah. Um definitely needed my support system that week. But um yeah, and then I just bounced back, recovered, kept going and uh and that was another Kick, uh, kickstart for you know writing my own work and getting that stuff put out there and um, and then I and that's when I also like got, I reached out to like agencies out out of the state and kind of locked those in and and now I'm consistently getting the the type of auditions that I want to get so yeah everything works out um, as long as you just have a positive view on things and just go for it and just allow yourself to to grow. Because that stuff has to happen in order for you to appreciate and and grow from it. I'd say that's a pretty good piece of advice right there. Um, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but not to, I guess, take it from you. But if you know, close this thing out. Because I think we've had a good conversation here, and I think that that's a good button for you know, the sleeve to <laughs> to get it all together. Um, but good. just kind of in summary of everything that you've said, what advice would you have for anyone who might be considering moving to LA? Um, I think the best piece of advice I can give is to really just sit down and think about it and think about all your options and is acting or whatever in the film business, is that what you really, really, really want to do? Is it all you think about? Is it, is it like, do you see yourself like this is my future and my only future? Um, and if that is the case, and sometimes only time will tell um, an experience, but if, if it proves that like years of, you know, pursuing it, or, or at least just your mindset. This is just all you need and want. Then, like, I would definitely say go for it because, like I said, as long as you're driven and passionate and patient, um, success will find you. You just have to be ready for any kind of outcome and be okay with that. And I think once you make peace with that idea, I think regardless of what happens, you'll be happy. I mean, because there's, there's really nothing else. I don't even want to try and pursue anything else because nothing else would make me happy. So if this, not that I want this current state to be, you know, my life forever, but I would be content, you know, because um, I'm working and I'm, and I'm doing it. I'm making a living off of it. So, yeah, um, you just, just be aware. Just make sure that this is indeed the only thing in your life that, that fuels you. And then be ready to be patient for it. Yet also be ready to work for it every day. <laughs> oh my god, every day. <laughs> Very cool. Now, Chris, if people want to see some of your stuff, where would be a good place? And what would you recommend checking out? Um, okay, so if you want to check out some of my stuff, it's kind of scattered about since I just kind of have like five YouTube channels. Um, I mean, you can always just YouTube my name, um, Vimeo it, um, go on my IMDb, look up some of my stuff. Um, my photography is on Facebook, Chris Labity Photography. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of <laughs> just Google me, you'll find something. And then um, I think one thing that I'm really proud of, um, I really like this short film that I did called The Last Three Days. Mm-hmm. Um, it was directed by Christine Morgan, my co-star Miriam Sine, and um, I really, I really like that project just because there wasn't any, like, I guess Hollywood pressure. It was just friends creating, um, and it was a total collaboration um, project, and it's one of my favorite moments because it, it, it was, it was just a good mark for me here in LA um, and reminder that I'm here to act and because I like it and I enjoy it um, and that was a good reminder because that's exactly what I got to do for the project is just relax and act and do what I'm do what I love and no pressure for, of like you know perfect delivery or like let me like nail this audition and and say exactly how I wanted to say it granted you should just kind of go in it however but um you know, there's no none of that none of that pressure to just book or you know anything that Hollywood I guess any of that Hollywood pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, I would say that's that's a big one. I'm also really excited just for things that are to die, which is the feature that I did where I, the under five one I was telling you about. I got to play a cop, and that was totally like out of my element, and um, and that was really fun. I think that'll be. I think it got picked up for theatrical distribution, so hopefully next year will be out, but I'm not entirely sure. I, I know the rough cut's complete, but look forward to that. <laughs> um, What'd you say the title was? It's called Things That Are to Die. Things That Are to Die. Okay. Yeah. Be on the lookout for Things That Are to Die. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? Um, thank you so much for having me. I feel very honored to have been a part of this and to, to want <laughs> for you to want to know about my experience out here and for me to be able to share that and hopefully, hopefully help somebody out figuring out what they want or, or making them feel, I guess, like it's not as scary. Because it's not as scary. It's not that scary. You just, just go for it, experience it. And if anybody is trying to get out to L.A., um, John, feel free to, like, share my contact info, and I'd love to, like, we can meet up, chat, and whatever, any other questions you might have, like, I'd love to help out because I was lucky enough to have somebody helped me out when I got here and, and kind of give me the, the lowdown on L.A. and helped me adjust. Because I had an idea of L.A., <laughs> mm-hmm. but it's totally not the idea. It doesn't stick once you actually live here. So I'm, I'd love to help out anybody that needs it. Well, very cool. Um, you say that you're honored. Well, I'm just really glad that you agreed to do it because it does seem like you've been busy lately. And, you know, this is just something, it started out just a way for me to try to get information, and now, because I feel like the interviews have been really good, Mm -hmm. not to toot my own horn, but I feel like they've Uh. been pretty good, (laughs) Um, (laughs) I wanted to share them, and so it's just been really nice the response that I've gotten so far and Good. when I've asked they've been like you yeah let's do it and <laughs> so it's just you know because when it comes down to it you can read as much as you want but getting perspective from people who are actually doing it and have made the transition there's aside from having your own experience that's the best you can have. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I hope I was helpful. <laughs> yeah, I think you were. You, yeah, you yeah, had answers. Helpful. <clears throat> I'm going to cut this, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm leaving that in right there. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yes, you were quite helpful. I appreciate you taking the time. And Absolutely. Once again, I've been talking with Chris Labity, and did I do that right? You nailed it again. You're nailed really good it. At awesome. <laughs> You're on a roll. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say it again. Just the end. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, blemish Jeez. my record. Yeah. <laughs> but I've been talking with Chris today, and 
thank you again for being a part of this, and I hope you have a good day, and I hope everybody's enjoyed it. And until the next one. <laughs> <laughs> All right.